I think there was some uh, incredibly substantive work that happened uh, really throughout the year, and uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the leadership shown by the Lieutenant Governor and Speaker, and I'm very, very grateful. Uh, at the very first of the year, they asked us to try to have as efficient and effective year as we could, and so we tried to get our legislation turned in, including a budget early, uh, and I think they responded uh, so, so that we can be finishing on May 1st, which I'm impressed. A few highlights for, uh, for me personally. I think the passage of the Team Act obviously was something that we thought was one of the most significant things we could do for state government. Uh, the lowering of taxes, both uh, a state and the state portion of the sales tax on food, um, uh, we think is very, very important for all of our citizens. I think maybe a piece that got under um, emphasized throughout the session was uh, some of the significant work on public safety that was done. Prescription drug abuse, tougher sentencing for gang-related crime, mandatory jail time for domestic violence offenders. Um, the uh, other piece that I thought was really significant this year was the waiver bill uh, that allowed us to uh, uh, free ourselves from No Child Left Behind, and as I've said several times, really drastically redefined how we do accountability for education in Tennessee. I was very grateful for the passing of the uh, Fast Track uh, grant, which we think will help uh, economic development in our rural communities. And then uh, we're particularly grateful for the work done on boards and commissions, which again, we think will make state government more effective. And finally, I want to say this. Um, the uh, budget that was passed, uh, we're very grateful for the work and the thought that went into that. Uh, it's a budget that uh, allowed us to have the tax cuts we talked about, uh, but also to have a 2.5% pay raise, the biggest raise in the last uh, five years, uh, to also put $30 million aside to address salary issues going forward for state employees and make sure we can attract the brightest and best. We put $343 million into higher ed capital, uh, that we haven't had enough emphasis on. Uh, 125 million to address some long neglected buildings in the state. It's not, those aren't fun things to invest in, but they're critical if we're going to serve well. Uh, so on behalf of uh, all of us in the administration, I want to thank uh, the Speaker and Lieutenant Governor. I think they did a great job this year. And, uh, I honestly believe that the state of Tennessee uh, will be a better state because of the work that they've done this year. And with that, I will turn it over to the Speaker for her comments. I like the federal government and Congress where the constant bickering and stalemate leads to complete dysfunction. I think you saw that the General Assembly could work well together and work well together, and I commend each member of that body. We ultimately, we bicker every now and then, but we set aside partisanship and regional differences to do the right thing for the state. And I'm honored to uh, be able to serve as the speaker. Um, again, I say commend again with the governor, the budget he presented to us, and the work that our chambers did. You know, we sometimes take for granted the fact that we have a balanced budget in Tennessee, but we shouldn't. And it comes with a great deal of work and effort on a lot of people's parts. And I'm proud that, proud that we were able to pass a balanced budget in addition to give some relief, some tax relief to our citizens. Something that's been very near and dear to my heart for a long time was the elimination of the, of the uh, death tax and the elimination of the gift tax. And we were able to do that this session. And I'm proud of my chairman of finance, Charles Sargent, for all of his tremendous work. Um, you know, we did a lot of good things in a lot of areas. It was great to work with the governor that worked with uh, a number of interested parties to reform our hiring practices in the state of Tennessee. And I think in the long term, we're going to see a real difference in the services that are provided to our citizens. So I could go on and on, but I think we had a very productive and worthwhile section. And I, I will say also, again, a subject important to me. We, we held the line on education reform. And we made it quite clear that we are committed to providing the best educational system possible for our children in the state. And I, I've said for years that it matters who governs. And I think we are proving every day that it matters who governs. Not only did we just adjourn in our earliest uh, times since 1998, but what we were able to accomplish in the last two years really is remarkable. When you think about the budget in general, and the governor talked about this, and the fact that not only were we able to balance a budget that is smaller than it was last year, but had tax cuts as we went uh, through that budget. But think about this, this is my 20th year of legislation. I do believe this is really the first time that we didn't recognize the revenue that we think we may have going forward, but not sure we have. And I think that's very important. As we go into the next budget cycle, uh, the federal government with the, the health care plan that may be coming down the, the road, it's very important that we have money in the bank to be able to address those items. And again, I think that's the first time we've ever done that. And something in my area of the state especially hard was the issue of synthetic drugs. And we passed uh, several bills dealing with synthetic drugs. It is a scourge 
It is awful if anybody's ever seen the, the effects of this. Seems like Northeast Tennessee may have gotten hit harder than any part of the state. So I, I worked with these two to be able to, to pass synthetic drugs. And again, every day that we wake up, I know the three of us to do, we want to make sure that we're improving education, especially K through 12, with a quality teacher in every classroom, but also making Tennessee the best state to eat and own and operate a business. We've made step, several steps through that this year with the unemployment reform to actually uh, ensure that people are actually looking for jobs, make, make sure that, that employers are treated fairly as well as the employees are treated fairly. I think the loser pay bill that we passed will really help small business in, in our area and in our state to keep us um, on par with other states that have passed bills a lot like this. So again, I just summarize by saying when you look back at what we were able to accomplish in the 107th General Assembly, it's really amazing. It really is what we've been able to do, and I think we'll look back years from now and say this is the year that we turned the, the corner in K-12 reform and turned the corner in making Tennessee that place to own and operate a business.